everyone, welcome back to the Glow Beauty channel. Today I thought I would talk about all the beauty products that have been getting me through these pandemic times because mask knee is a thing and my skin has kind of changed to be both now like really oily and dry at the same time. Today I thought I would do a walkthrough of all the skincare products um, beauty products that I've been using to get through this pandemic. I'll start off with dealing with pimples because of mask knee, and then I'll go into treatment prevention, and then end off with the little bits and bobs I've been incorporating into my repertoire that I have here in this basket. So I'm gonna start from head to toe. We're gonna start with our minds first because we are all stressed AF. And here are the products that have been getting me through stress. One, my CBD oil from Calyx. And I've been getting this brand of CBD oil for years and years before CBD was like really a thing. And it just helps me put away all the anxieties I have from my to-do list, so I'm not constantly obsessing over, oh my god, I have so much to do, and just the paralyzing fear of messing up and just the what if, what if, what if thought train. So this just kind of like chills me out so I'm able to work. So I keep this on my desk. However, when it comes to nighttime, I clench my jaw and there, I don't know what to do about it. I've tried mindfulness, like Karen, tonight you will not clench your jaw. Let's relax, let's relax. It just doesn't work. So I pulled out my old jade roller that is squeaky, like not too high quality. However, my poor sore jaw muscles that have a crazy workout every single night, it just feels so nice. I think of this as my mini foam roller for my face because that's basically what I need um, for the days where I'm clenching my jaw and I have forgotten my night guard. Now, we all know masks aren't great for those of us who are already prone to breaking out in this acne beard area. I've been relying on my handy dandy 10% benzoyl peroxide. It was like $3 at Target and it just dries out any eruptions that you kind of feel coming on and can sometimes you know stop in its tracks and it also kills all the bacteria that causes acne second for spots pimple patches are so so key um, hydrocolloid patches back before pimple patches were literally everywhere I used to save money by getting blister band-aids like the ones that you use for your heels, like the generic brand from Walmart or whatever, and I would just cut little corners of it off and stick it on my face. These are a little bit less embarrassing to show up to work with because it's like a circle and people are like, oh, that's a pimple patch, as opposed to like, there's a weird sticker stuck to your face. But anyways, pimple patches, I thought because it's made out of the same material, the hydrocolloid, they're not all made the same. This brand, I got it, on Amazon because it was cheap. It's really not the best. It doesn't give you that really satisfying, like squishy spot, <laughs> like when it sucks all the gunk out of your face. So there are better brands, but you know, like I'm not really complaining. It kind of does its thing. My favorite part about wearing a mask is that I can have like five of these on my face and no one's ever gonna know. So next is prevention of spots to begin with. Exfoliation is absolutely key. Um, you want to be able to make sure there's no buildup of dead skin cells anywhere in your face. So chemical exfoliation is absolutely key. These are the two serums that I've been using. This one is Caudalie's Vino Pure and also Pharmacy's Honeymoon Glow. I've been using these for a really long time. This one this is actually one of my empties. Generally, I use this one at night, and I find that this one just keeps my pores clear in general, and I really notice a difference when I skip a couple days of this stuff. And I, this is truly one of my holy grail products. Cannot live without it. And then when it comes to kind of calming my skin 
and having a lighter serum to work with during the day, I use the Caudalie Vino Pure. And this has salicylic acid, so we're really going in with all different kinds of acids here. Both of these are AHA based. I do find this one a little bit drying, so I'll always follow up with a moisturizer. Yeah, so I've also been using the Vino Pure toner in the summer instead of washing my face in the morning i'll put this on a little cotton pad and just swipe that all over my face as my first step and then if i'm going to be wearing a mask generally i want something that's going to help balance and control oil so i have the caudalie vino pure mattifying fluid and also the glossier priming moisturizer balance i find these were really key in the summer However, now that it's winter, well, first of all, I'm in lockdown, so I don't need too much like oil control going on, but I've been really dry like around my mouth area and on my cheeks, it's just been dry. So I'll sometimes even use a combination of a mattifying moisturizer as well with a heavier moisturizer. So once a week, I make sure to do an exfoliating mask. There's just a lot of chemical exfoliation going on. And I've been obsessed with the Grown Alchemist Enzyme Exfoliant. This mask has seriously blown me away. I'm a huge fan of the Tata Harper Resurfacing Mask. However, this one has really given that one a run for its money. They're both expensive, but I find they work so well. They just tighten your pores and it makes you look so good. And I've been really impressed by Grown Alchemist products in terms of quality and efficacy. And this one is really no exception. Highly, highly recommend this as, as a treatment mask. And then of course, we are all doing a lot more hand washing than normal because hand hygiene is all the rage these days. Thanks COVID. So I've always had eczema prone skin on my hands and feet, which has really, really sucked, especially when I'm working with a lot of like cardboard or paper or handling paper goods a lot. My hands get so dried out. I've tried basically every hand cream out there the Skin Fix Hand Repair Cream. This has been my favorite. I cannot live without it at all. And it just prevents my hands from being so dry to the point of cracking and bleeding. Amazing. And also, if you have eczema prone skin or you're finding your hands are super dry, definitely look into the ingredients in your hand soap. Sulfates, particularly sodium lorth sulfate, and sodium laurel sulfate are extremely stripping. They are very cheap surfactant ingredients. So like they're the ingredient in soap that makes things foamy, which isn't exactly necessary to be clean. The foaming action is more like a psychological booster. You're like, ah, so much foam must be clean. So if you're like me and you find that your hands are just so stripped from hand soaps, um, I know that a lot of public washroom soaps, if I'm using that on a regular basis, my hands will break out with eczema and it's a painful situation. Uh, so I carry my own soap. And my favorite soap during this pandemic has been the lavender foaming hand soap from Sage. It is so good and it's just so delightful to use. It comes up and it just makes your hands smell so good but in a way that's not overpowering or offensive because um, I can be very sensitive to scents. And last but not least, I have been obsessed with this Glossier Body Hero Dry Touch Oil Mist since the beginning of winter. The lid is absolute crap, um, so that's why I have saran wrap. You can either use saran wrap or Teflon tape, like plumber's tape that you would use for your attaching your shower head to keep this the screw on pump on but i find saran wrap kind of does the same thing uh, packaging i feel like they just didn't put a lot of thought into this because it's like a glass bottle you're dealing with oil so this is going to get super slippery you're not careful i tend to spritz my whole body and then rub it in so that this stays not slippery and yeah but i find that in terms of all the body oils that i have used 
it's the perfect balance of an oil but not like too greasy or greasy at all and it comes at a pretty reasonable price point as well and in terms of the smell that was like my biggest concern before buying this because the Glossier scents can be kind of hit or miss with me and I'm just very picky in general but I find that the scent for this body oil is kind of like a fresh Italian spa. For me, it's very reminiscent of a younger, less intense version of Aqua di Parma's Colonia, which is like classic Italian perfume, like a younger version of that, which is, it's very nice. It's very classic and has that clean powdery scent to it, but it doesn't linger for too long, which is awesome. So that rounds out all the beauty products that I have been using and loving during this pandemic that's been pretty much exclusive to pandemic times. So thanks so much for tuning in. I really hope that you have already subscribed and if not, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to check out Glow Beauty over on Instagram as well. We have new content constantly and everything is always you know, pink and happy and we are all just trying to get through this together. So join us over there. So that's it really. And I'll see you guys again next week. Bye.